what I'm going to be talking to you about today is 2020 vision. And what I hope to do in the next 25 minutes is to give you a vision of the future, an idea of where we might be going over the next eight years, and where you find yourself in that and how you embrace it. Now, I have no doubt if I spoke to each one of you individually and I asked you, how busy are you? You would all tell me how it seems more and more difficult to get enough things done to get everything done in the day. How do you get through the day and get everything that needs to be done? How do you accomplish it? And it's very true. We all feel it. We're getting busier and busier. There seems to be more things to do. We seem to have to work harder and harder. The bad news is the IDC, one of the world's largest and most respected research companies has said that by 2020 we can expect to be 40 times busier than we are today. And before you all resign from life and fall over and decide you're not going to be not going to be cope with all of this, I hope in the course of this presentation to show you how and why today is probably the most exciting time to be alive and the most exciting time to be in business and how understanding the technology of the present and embracing it you will accomplish and succeed quite successfully no matter how busy you get. The facts before us are this, is that we can't change the past. Our past is the past, but we do have the opportunity to create a future. And it has been said that the only way to successfully predict the future is to create it. Create the future you want for yourself and create the future you want for your business. But all of this technology that had come before made it possible for the internet. And the internet is what heralded in or brought in the third revolution of the global community because this really did change everything and it started what we're now in which is the communication revolution where it is all about communication 2003 a company called MySpace launched this was the world's first big social network many of you probably don't even know about it but this you know and this gives you an idea of the world we're living in this company went from someone's idea to being developed, to being out in the world, to being the biggest social network in the world, to the point where Rupert Murdoch paid half a billion dollars to buy it, and now we don't even hear about it. Hardly anybody knows about it. It's been 10 years. How amazing is that? But this started something very important, because right after MySpace came the rest of them. You've heard of all of these, and there are hundreds more that you've never heard of and you don't quite use. Some succeed, some don't. This is the social web. And what was significant about it? In the 20th century, business owned the media. And business owned the media because of advertising. Business bought advertising on billboards, on radio, TV, magazines. And because business owned the media, it controlled the message. You and I as consumers, the message we got was very controlled. And because of that, we believed government, we trusted businesses, and we were just spoken to through advertising. But in the start of this communication revolution, ownership of the media began to change. Media is now owned by you and me, us. And it is now possible for someone who's got no connection to traditional media to become a person of influence in the world. And my favorite example of that is a 19-year-old kid who decided he wanted to write about technology and social media six years ago and he started writing a blog and he started getting interest and following today that blog has a following of four million people around the world and was just recently sold to CNN for 200 million dollars this 19 year old kid hadn't, hadn't gone to journalism school he didn't have the right connections he didn't have family that were already in media he was someone with a point of view and through these mediums made a success of it. And this is the issue that business has struggled with. How to cope and adapt with the fact that customers now own the media. And because business moves slowly and customers move a lot faster, business has been somewhat left behind. And this is demonstrated in this next slide. What happens out on this social web every minute, every 60 seconds? 240 emails are sent every 60 seconds. That's 4 million a second. 24 million instant messages, SMSs, WhatsApp, BBM. You know, we're back and forth. Probably during this presentation, you'll send a good portion of those 24 million. 175,000 photographs are uploaded to Facebook. Facebook has 140 billion photographs on their servers. 3% of every photograph that's ever been taken by humankind sits on Facebook servers. 
In the last 60 seconds, 1.8 million items on Facebook were liked. There have been 140,000 tweets and 700 new Twitter accounts have been opened. And those of you here today that are not on Twitter, I hope you're going to contribute to this number before the end of the day and get out there and be on Twitter. And in just the time I've taken to show you these few stats, 35 hours of video were uploaded to YouTube. And that was watched by 1.4 million people. Every 60 seconds this is happening. And what does this tell you? That tells you our basic human desire and need to communicate, to share, to be, feel like we're part of a community. All of these amazing platforms going right back from the Industrial Revolution are all they're tools of communication. Communicators, however, have always been and will always be people. It is people using these platforms. You know, we've, been, we've had miscommunications from the very dawn of civilization. And often these tools give us the ability to be globally misunderstood instantly. So we have to remember, and when, when business takes the step to say, okay, we're going social, it is always people. And before you understand social media, we have to understand communication. The future you find yourself in 2020, if you find yourself in a good place, it's largely going to depend on what you do from today. And what you should be doing today is to be there and to communicate. And the challenge, of course, is to find out where there is, where should you be, and then how do you communicate, how do you interact. And when you solve those two things, you will have 2020 vision.